Hello and welcome to Straight from the Training Ground, the podcast where we share our love for the beautiful game and the people in their communities doing beautiful things. I'm Jay, along my partner in crime here, Ryan. Ryan, glad to have you tonight. We have a, a special guest, someone we've known for a long time. We're very pleased and excited to have our interview guest be Scott Morrissey, the men's head coach at the University of Rio Grande, uh, our former head coach, our old stomping grounds. If you're not familiar with the University of Rio Grande, their NAIA school, and uh, during Scott's time there, they've won two national championships, two national runner-ups. They've had uh, seven Final Four appearances, 22 conference championships, 70 All-Americans, and three MLS Combine players. So uh, very excited to have him. I know he's someone uh, special to us tonight. Yeah, it's, it's a good interview. I think it's going to be um... – it's good to, to talk to somebody who's one of the, probably the longest serving coaches in um, U.S. college soccer uh, currently serving right now um, and such a successful coach. And um, someone we've known from even before that, that success started to kick in, I guess, or as it just started to kick in. So um, I think it's great that we're able to, to, to have him talk about some of the stories along the way and, um, um, and, and just have a good, uh, good chat with him. Yeah, absolutely. And I think even... Uh, which we'll see here in a second in our interview, even as long as you and I have known him, we, we learned some new things we weren't aware of. <laughs> yeah, some very interesting things. So um, yeah. entertaining things, I'd say. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, he, he really opens up on this interview. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's a must watch for people that uh, like college soccer and are very interested in the, the game at that level. So without any further ado, here is our interview with men's head coach of the University of Rio Grande, Scott Morrissey. Scott, thanks a lot for taking the time to hang out with us a little bit. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, as we alluded to a little bit here, a very successful program over the years through uh, the University of Rio Grande. Uh, some of the accomplishments uh, you can see there on the screen during your time. Uh, Scott, just real quick, what got you into coaching in the first place? Um, to be honest with you, it was uh, just a college experience. Uh, I, I attended Tiffin University, played two sports, and uh, – knew that when I went there that what I wanted to do was be involved in athletics and coaching. And to be honest with both of you and anybody that might be listening, I, my path was going to be basketball. And yeah. it was only basketball because of it was so difficult to get into soccer. And I had a I had an opportunity to be a GA in 1990 at Ohio University. And I was going to be on the staff with Larry Hunter, kind of a legendary basketball guy. Yeah. Um, but the soccer opportunity came before it, and I jumped on it and took it and never looked back. But you you were a two-sport uh, college athlete, right? Yes. Did both. Basketball, soccer. Yes. At Tiffin. Yes. Okay. Yeah, good experience. I chose – I probably did it for all the wrong reasons. I, I chose my – my uh, university, just based on I wanted to play two sports. No, oh, yeah. and so that I didn't even care about academics at the time. It's just like I wanted to I wanted to play sports, basketball, soccer, and keep going with it and see what happened and see where it would take me. So, uh, Jay, you go first. Go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to ask you. So, so back then, Scott did did a lot of other coaches and places were they not very open to that? Um, I was being recruited to go to Bowling Green to play soccer. Um, never good enough to play division one basketball. Um, I thought I was good enough to play soccer. Um, and then I had a couple of other opportunities to play both at other small schools and Tiffin came in late and I really liked both the coaches I met when I went on my visit and it was late late spring, early summer. And basically they gave me enough scholarship money to cover tuition, which at the time back in those days was like <laughs> three grand hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. Or 300 may, may have been yeah, 300. Yeah. So it worked out well. I, um, I played for Keith Dambrot, legendary college basketball coach, coach LeBron James at Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary, um, played, or coached another another legendary guy. Not to me, they were was Troy Taylor played at Ohio State. Yeah, guard for for the Buckeyes and David Greer played at Bowling Green. 
those, those were Canton McKinley boys. Um, and I just, I had a really, really positive athletic experience and basketball was fantastic. And then I played for Ian day, um, who was coach at Tiffin forever. Um, did a great job. And I just knew I wanted to do something like he did because he looked like he enjoyed what he did and he did it well. So I thought, hell, if he could do it, I could too. <laughs> and at that point in time, Tiffin um, were a powerhouse, the NAIA, right? Yeah. Well, Tiff, Tiffin was definitely a powerhouse, but the powerhouse was Wilmington College back in the day, Bud Lewis. And, huh. and Bud, Bud did a great job. And my God, I could tell you some stories that people wouldn't even believe. But, you know, in 85, 86, 87, we lost to Wilmington in the district championship game every year. And at, at the time, the NAIA only had 12 participants at the final site for national championships. So if you didn't beat Wilmington, you weren't going anywhere. <laughs> but after you beat Wilmington, you had to win one more game. So it was my senior year. We finally got past them. Um, hmm. But just a quick little side note. It was my junior year. We played at Wilmington. We had a bench clearing brawl. <laughs> at Wilmington? That sounds familiar. At, at, Wil at Wilmington. And it was, to be honest with you, both teams, both teams were very good, but Wilmington was better than us that year. And our team captain spent two weeks in the Clinton County jail for assault. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm telling you, I could uh, I could write a book about some of this stuff, but that Wilmington and Tiffin back then, they were the two big powerhouses. Uh, Wilmington, man, they had a really good program. Bud Lewis yeah. did a phenomenal job. Um, great players. And then senior year, Tiffin won it. We got to the national tournament, got to the final site. We lost to the eventual national champions in the quarterfinal. Um, and then I was, who was just – who, who was that who beat you? At the time, um, it was Sagamon State. Oh, now they're okay. called Illinois Springfield, NCAA Division II school. Another legendary guy. I mean, just back then, the NAI was was probably as good as the top NCAA one programs as you'll ever get. Yeah. And there was a they had a they had a competition one spring where the Division One, Two, Three, and NAI champions played in a little semifinal final deal and the NAI champions were the the ones that were that came out of it so but it was back then it was it was it was NAI College of Boca Raton which is now uh, Lynn University I mean they had an unbelievable squad Simon Frazier out of British Columbia yeah big time I mean there was tons of good programs and to be honest with you too the West Virginia Conference in the 70s and 80s, might have been the best collegiate. Was that with A and B and uh, Davis and Elkins? A, B, Davis and Elkins, uh, Wheeling, uh, University of Charleston, West Virginia yep. Wesleyan. Um, I'm, I might be leaving somebody else out. All yep. big time. I mean, big time programs. Hell, my senior year, the final four was A, B, and Wesleyan were both in it. That's you're taking this to the late eight, 80s there, right? So yeah, just not to that's say when I started all of us here, right? Late eighties, yeah. And then you know, obviously, you're thirty years past now, and you're um, got national titles and uh, powerhouse NAIA. But when you dropped into Rio Grande as the head <laughs> men's soccer coach, it wasn't quite that way, right? It was a it, tell us about that transition and when that was. Y yeah, so so Rio had a part time coach, um, and the story was, and I'll be as quick as I can. The story was they hired a guy from Holy Cross, an assistant. And I don't remember his name. I, if I said his name, I might be wrong, but I thought his name was Bob Surrett. But that guy lasted four days. And according to the players, <laughs> he lived out of his car. And after like day four, he's like, man, I'm leaving this joint. So he left. So they were without a coach. And that's where I came into it. Uh, the athletic director at, at Rio at the time was the basketball coach. His name was John Lawhorn. Yeah. And he called Tiffin University, talked to Ian Day, and I just so happened to be sitting across from Ian in his office. Ian handed me the phone. The guy offer, offered me a job, just said, I got to come down and meet the school president. Drove down the next day, took the job, 
What year is that? 89. September 4th of 89. Okay. So went back up to Tiffin, packed up everything I could in my car and went back to Rio Grande and I've never <laughs> left. It's so, been a lot um, of fun though. So, so on that, so just for, to date me and Jay as well, I arrived in 94. Correct. Yeah, that, right. <laughs> Correct. So those, those three, four years were kind of like uh, figuring it out sort of situation. And you were young. How old were you at that time? 22. So I was, I, I had played against three or four of the guys that I was coaching in 89. <laughs> we were terrible. Um, our record that year was one ten and one. And then we got a forfeit win because somebody played an ineligible player. So it was two. We had two wins my first year. Wow. <laughs> um, started recruiting, started bringing in as many as I could just to change the culture or actually create Creative. a culture. And that took a long time. You guys were kind of the pioneers of all that. Ryan, certainly you were. Jay, you came maybe a year or two after, I believe. Yeah, yep. Um, but it was hard work, and but it was fun. Um, and obviously, it goes without saying that the, the way we built this was I started traveling overseas and you know, not to bore everybody with, with the story, but, you know, I met your dad on the sideline and the rest was history. You were playing, you were playing in a game that I was standing and watching and your father heard me talk and said, you're a Yank. What are you doing over here? (laughs) I told him I was looking for college (laughs) soccer players. And then I ended up being in your living room, having a cup of tea talking about (laughs) Rio Grande. Yeah. And, uh, and literally from that point, if there's anybody to credit for the success of our program, besides the financial backing of the Evan, Evan Davis and Elizabeth Davis family and their foundation, it would be your dad because that man took me everywhere in the Northwest of England, mm-hmm. Scotland, everywhere <laughs> looking for players. I tell people, I tell a couple of my players, I, oh, well, former former players and some assistant coaches, you know, your dad had me sitting in front of Kenny Dogleash talking about Rio Grande yeah. or Tommy Burns up at Tommy Burns. Celtic. Remember that Celtic Park? Yeah. We met like, him. Yeah. These people are like, who the hell is this guy? You know, I mean, but that that's how ambitious your dad was. But that's what it took to, you know, get it going. And I give him all the credit in the world because with, without his direction, it just was – I would have been running around blind trying to figure it out. So no, that's, that's very kind of you. Uh, I think um, just moving on that, I mean, I think how, you know, with those years in the mid nineties, we started winning a few things. Yep. So after that though, it went to another level and, and um, you know, how many, how many national titles Two now or two, two um, really like in, in your guys era, when, when you were playing, um, we, we were turning the corner, we were getting, we were getting a little bit of recognition in the top 25. We qualified for a couple of what they called um, regional region, regional championship events, um, losing out on penalties for a couple of years. Um, you know, the most heartbreaking loss before we ever cracked that national tournament was going to Roberts Wesleyan and big Ollie Sanders saving four penalties. <laughs> and we still lost. Man, that's not that's not and, and I mean I tell people that story, they're like, No, you your your keeper saved four, and I said he saved <laughs> four and we still lost. Wow. So but two thousand by two thousand one, we got to the national tournament and we got to the final four in that first year. And then two thousand two, final four, well, round of eight. Um, and then two thousand three we won it, two thousand four round of sixteen. But from that time frame from 2001 to 2006, we never lost a game in the regular season. So we had like wow. a run of like 112 games where we never lost a game. Oh, five we drew, years. We drew a few. Um, and then it was, we, we lost, you know, in the, in the national tournament, whatever. And then 2008 lost in the, in the national final in heartbreaking fashion. And then in overtime and 2009 final four, and then we had a few rounds of eight, and then 
15, we won it again. 16, we lost in the final. So we could have gone back to back and we're really, really close. Um, and then this year got to the final four again. Well, that's, okay. that's awesome, Scott. Yeah. So obviously, you know, for doing it as long as you've done it, um, what do you enjoy most about coaching? The thing I enjoy most is being around young, young people. Uh, keeps me young. Uh, I learn a great deal from, from the players that, to, to say that the sport has changed and, and it's evolved and athletes have changed, it has. And there's some things that I embrace and there's some things that I just can't figure <laughs> out uh, and, and don't, don't want to. Um, but I, I thoroughly enjoy the, you know, day-to-day -day grind and, and looking for good players and, you know, trying to learn, you know, more about the game and tactically get better and, you know, there's a lot you can learn from from young people. And, you know, I, I enjoy that part of it. I enjoy what, what I, I I probably enjoy this just as much as anything else. I enjoy taking care of the facility. Um, we pride ourselves on a good surface. And I say this to a lot of people. We got the best playing surface anywhere other than in the state of Ohio, Columbus Crew and FC Cincinnati. And I put our playing surface up against any. Wow. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So I think I Jay, you that. and I may need to get back down there and see it. We haven't. Yeah, it's, I yeah, have been. Know, Where have you been? You don't. You don't want to come and see it in the winter time because it's brown. But it's Bermuda grass. It's. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is fantastic to play on, and it it holds up. It's durable. Um, there's a lot to it. I, I I I I get a lot of enjoyment seeing visiting teams for the first time roll in, and you know when people come up and compliment me on that, that that, that means a lot. And then yeah, Tony, sure. my longtime assistant, who's the women's coach, he he's right there in the thick of it too. So he deserves a great great deal of credit, not only for the playing surface, but for the building of the program because he was my assistant for twenty five years. Yeah, I'm sure. Jay and I had second out about Tony Daniels, who's yeah, a, I mean just his own right, just an amazing guy, Absolutely. and a hell of a player too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he he liked to kick people. Uh, <laughs> he was. Well, that kind of uh, leads to my next question. I was going to ask you. Um, so during that time, you know, 20 or 30 years, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen at coaching at the college level? Well, I think, uh, I think for, for some of the biggest changes, you know, there weren't many people going over recruiting overseas. And so for the longest time, I can always remember coaches, people would always call me and then people that would see me, they're like, man, what's the deal with you getting all these players from Northwest England? You know? Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd say, Oh, well, I did this, did this. I know this guy, I know this guy. Well, then the next thing, you know, there's another 15 schools that are starting to recruit in that same area. So, yeah. And it just, you just like, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I got a lot of grief for having a lot of internationals, but now you look at it and yeah. everybody's doing it. And so, Every division—that's that's a big thing. Yeah, every so, division. I mean, I, one question I did have for you. I think um, we've always talked about this, and um, I, I I rank NAI the top level NAI as good as Division Two, as good as as for Division One. To be honest, and some teams in Division Three to Sprinkling as well. But how do you kind of how do you place each of those divisions? And it's not necessarily. I I don't believe it's one to all the way down to NEIA to, you know, to JUCO or whatever. There's a different spaces where those divisions kind of like live in. And as I said, the level of those top teams can, they can beat each other. So yeah. what's the different characteristics or profile of each of those divisions in your sense? And where do you see NAIA? Well, I, I, I see the, 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 the top NAIA, I, I think could compete with probably the generally, you know, I, I think we could give just about anybody a game. Now, with that being said, the, the one thing, and, and we've lost players to some top Division I types of programs, and the difference is this, and this is no disrespect intended to any team that we play in our conference, but if I'm recruiting a kid and he can go play in the ACC or he could play in the River States Conference, you know, by all means, go to the ACC those top division one schools, you don't have any days off. Whereas if you're playing at Rio or you're playing at, let's just, let's, we'll just leave it at Rio. 
<laughs> you're gonna have you're gonna have games where you know you could roll out sometimes your second team and you're still gonna get a result. And yeah. it's just the nature of the different programs and you know how people recruit and the the institutions. So it's just but, the depth of the the the, the level and some of the yeah problems. for sure. And yeah. you know when you look at that when you look at that index of the top 50 to 75 NCAA one schools, man, they're all big time and they're all good and resources and, yeah. you know, big, big budgets, division two, the, you know, the, the, the conference, the conference down in Florida, um, they're, they're fantastic. The West Virginia conference or MEC. mountain East, I think is what it's MEC, called. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you look at university of Charleston. I mean, they've been doing it for years. D and E's come on a scene. Notre Dame College has done very well. So, I mean, there's there's good good competition. Well, uh, just last thing, Scott, and we'll get you out of here. If you had any advice, uh, you know, been doing this a long time and recruited a lot of people um, over the years. If you had any advice to just just high school kids right now, in terms of playing at the college level, the whole recruiting scene, you know, and all that, what advice would you have for them? Well, the biggest thing is, you know. For me, and I say it to them all the time, you know, be true to yourself and know exactly your level. Um, and I guarantee you there's a program out there for every kid at every level. Um, you know, when I'm recruiting, I'm recruiting a kid from Columbus. And do you know anything about our program? Nope. Don't know anything about it. I'm like, <laughs> you know, don't know any history. You, have you looked at our roster? Nope. <laughs> and so it's like do your homework and know kind of where you where you fit in and i'm not saying that that young man or a kid from columbus can't play at our at our university because they can there's Just no doubt research. about that yeah but do your research and then you know the other the other thing too is you know we're not an ivy league type of school by any means you two guys know that <laughs> and that's and that's okay um but you know, if you're looking for a really prestigious academic degree um, and if you had a chance to go to, you know, and, and I'm certainly not trying to downgrade what we have, but I, I know where we're at and I know, you know, kind of our lane. So, you know, just do your research. But there's a program out there for every single kid. Guarantee it. Yeah. Go where is your best fit. Right. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Through. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, as a high school coach, I've told a lot of kids that over the years myself, I think everyone, and we've talked about it already, but gets so worked up about what division a school is and all those kinds of things. And, um, you know, we could talk a lot more about that stuff, but it's not really about the label or, or what the level is called, you know, what division they're playing in. It's the school. It's the, like you said, the buildings, the feel you get from the place, the coaches and, and you know, putting in your research and finding a place where you'll be happy. Absolutely. Um, yeah, overall. So, yeah. Scott, thanks a lot. I know it's uh, special hanging out with you tonight. Uh, for Ryan and I, spent some time learning more yeah. about the history and everything you've accomplished. We really appreciate you. Well, I, I tell you what, I appreciate you two guys and all of the other guys that you've played with and everybody that, you know, entrusted me, you know, and, you know, you guys are all part of the building of, of our program and how successful it's been. And, you know, the, the foundation was set a long time ago with you guys. And so um, I, I always remind the players that are currently there of the players from the past and what the sacrifices made to make the program what it is. So I appreciate both of you. Really proud of the careers you guys have carved out in the business and uh, really appreciate our friendship as well. Definitely. Appreciate absolutely, it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, uh, Scott Morrissey, men's head coach, University of Rio Grande. Thank you, guys. Visit our partners at TractionSocks.com for performance grip socks created for all athletes. Visit our new partners, UnoZero at UnoZero.com, where classic beauty and quality meet modern design and elegance for football boots and more.